welcome to the behind the scenes video at the Bostic Family Light Show. We've gotten a lot of messages and requests asking us for more information on our show, how to get started, where to buy props, how it all works, and we thought this video would be a great way to start to share that information. First up, we have these real big lights. They can be purchased at a variety of stores. We bought ours at Home Depot. Typically they come with a single color LED installed that can easily be taken out and you can install pixels. We installed 10 pixels per real big light. They are just held in with hot glue. The hot glue holds them in place and we install, we use the hot glue on the other end where the connectors go to make sure that they're waterproof. We have them hanging on these hooks and then between the hooks we have the garland just to create an aesthetically pleasing look or decoration between the different hooks and props. The wires all neatly zip tied and mounted. And as we move over to the other side, we have our North Pole sign, which we used as a matrix and a tune to sign. This allowed us to tell the viewers which radio station we're using. And that was kind of mounted with this super strut material. We use this for our spooky tree at Halloween. In addition to this EMT, it's just half inch metal conduit used, normally used for electrical wiring. And as you can see right here, we have a few different power injection points. When you run pixels in a high density prop like this, you'll need to inject voltage. As the voltage travels through the different pixels, it will start to decrease and then the color will change. So we have these weatherproof connectors for the power injection separate, and this allows the prop to stay a consistent uniform color. And we have a few outdoor speakers that are wired to a normal stereo in our basement. This just allows the viewers to be able to listen to the show if they wanna get out of the car. Next up, we have our mini trees and our candy canes. And to mount these, we again use this half inch EMT and that's just hammered into the ground and then the plastic for the trees basically just slides over it and zip ties to the EMT. This allows them to stand upright. Over here we have these half inch EMT clamps with some spacers. This allows the prop to mount when you can't just directly zip tie it. Again, we have more power injection. Right here we have the end of the data or the data output coming down and the reason we did this is just to make sure that you don't see the wiring from the street tried to make everything as neat and clean as possible so the viewers couldn't really see all the wiring and everything like that on the other side it is the same and then we have our singing tree and you can see there's more pixels around the mouth that allows us to get the different mouth movements Again, held in with these half inch EMT clamps and the spacers, some more power injection. And if you inject power in multiple areas, it allows it to consistently stay that uniform color. We have a couple of floodlights. The floodlights are a different voltage than the other props. So they're on a separate controller, but they can change to any of the colors. The rest of the pixels can change. They're available in a variety of different wattages. The ones we use for our show are 10 watts. And then next up, we have these spinners. And these are just kind of a cool prop. You can use them for any holiday that you want. We ended up using these in a few unique ways and kind of use them as the railroad noise when we had the Polar Express plane. We basically just glued them to a washer to our window, and then that allows them to come off nice and easily at the end of the season. Again, you have more power wire and injection kind of running down. We have some icicles, and then here is another one of our control boxes. This one is set up for a few different props, but is running five volts. And as you can see, we have kind of a simple box here, a five volt power supply, and the red wire is a data in, and the white wire is a data out. I'll get more into that in a future video. And 
at the bottom down here, that is where you have your outputs that allow you to hook up to the different props. Next up, we have our mega tree, and there's quite a lot going on with this, as you can see. It stands about 24 feet tall and is quite heavy, so I wanted to make sure it was really enforced, didn't go anywhere, and nobody had to worry about anything as far as it falling over in windy days or anything like that. The pole that we used is a few different poles. We used different diameters as the pole goes up, it gets a little bit skinnier. And we ended up just setting that in some concrete in one of those Home Depot buckets. Once it cured, we added those eyelets and added a little bit more. And then we just used ratchet straps and hammered it down. We ended up zip tying all of the power injection wires going up and then it has its own control box. We also have this ring which just allows the even spacing between the different strands. I want to come up with a better solution for that next year. There were some of the strands that you can see they're a little bit wavy or not all pointing exactly the same direction. Let me get these out of the way. Alright, so this is the controller that we're using just for the mega tree. We have two different power supplies in here. Both of them are 5 volts. We have the F16 expansion board up top and the F16 V3 down here. And this allows everything to be powered. This blue wire here is for data out. It can be something like DMX. It could also be for those smart receivers. And then this is your data in for Ethernet. This allows it to connect to like a network switch or something like that. I'm going to do a much more in-depth tutorial just on this box in the future. All right, and moving along. We wrapped the pillars in our front porch just in the standard pixels. And you can see the icicles kind of hanging down and you see the other spinner kind of on the other side. And we ended up using this J channeling, which is just kind of plastic or vinyl siding material. We ended up drilling holes in the channeling and then we just used 3M tape to go around the windows and around the outside of the house, we ended up screwing those in because those are gonna be permanent. Next up, we have our main controller box. This also has an F16 V3 in it. We are, again, using two five volt power supplies and the blue wire is for serial output that goes to the smart differential receivers and the black wire is for its data in that connects to one of our network switches. This controls all of our outlines, our candy canes, mini trees, really the majority of our show. Next up, we have these arches. These arches, they turned out really well, but they were quite a pain to get configured and get working properly. I'll end up doing a separate tutorial with more in-depth information on these, but kind of a brief overview. They are using strips. They are held in with these rebar caps, and this one inch PEX tubing slides into the rebar cap with a notch for the wiring, and they have two arches mounted per two by six, and they have the little notch that's connected. As you see, as I pull this out, we ended up using some standard household wiring to create kind of a spacer and allow them a tighter fit. They don't sell uh, PEX tubing in the same diameter as these rebar caps locally. You can order it online. Typically it is fairly expensive to order those. So we ended up using these kind of little short little wires. That way we can make them fit a little bit tighter. And as you can see, they lean differently depending on whether those spacers are in there. Putting those wires in there just gave it kind of a snug fit, allowed them to be a little bit more uniform and be a little bit more of a vertical as opposed to kind of that leaning angle that you can see here. Over the summer and as we move to next year, I do plan on getting a thicker PEX tubing. We'll just have to go pick it up or pay the increased price for shipping since they don't sell this stuff locally. And then 
you can see that we have these icicles that are kind of just hanging down. We ended up screwing these in to the metal mounts for the porch itself. So we didn't end up adding any new holes for any of this type of stuff. And as we move over to this other side, these icicles are mounted to the other house outlines that we have up here and we are planning on leaving the other outlines up permanently the icicles will just come down at the end of the season and you can see we have this additional pvc tube we painted to match the color of the house but this just allows the wiring to sit inside and the thicker of the two poles here is just for all of the props that are on the roof or the things that won't be up permanently and as we move over here, you can see this is where our antenna is. This is what we had to build to allow you to listen to the radio station in the car. And this antenna, I'll post a guide in another video on how to construct or build these for your application. But that just connects to an FM transmitter, which connects to the audio out on a computer or Raspberry Pi. And then you can see the we got the snowflakes and up here we have strips around the door these are the same type of strips that are in those arches i do highly recommend avoid using strips they tend to fail they break easily you have to be very careful with them i would also say you have to be really good and comfortable at soldering to be able to use these because when you try to get them to fit in certain locations, you will have to cut and connect them with solder and make sure that they are sealed and weatherproofed again. And you can get this aluminum siding with this diffuser, which will kind of give it a nice look. We ended up using the IP65 version. Over the years, I have played with quite a few different strip style LEDs and the IP67 they end up filling with condensation typically, and then the circuit board or LEDs themselves typically corrode. All right, now I gotta climb on the roof, so give me just a minute. All right, so now that we're up on the roof, we have these snowflakes, and they are mounted with this 16 gauge steel back strapping that is just basically slid underneath the shingles, and we used roofing glue to adhere them to the shingles without having to drill any holes, and then the EMT is zip tied to those. The EMT is again held in with the EMT clamps and then we have the wiring going from prop to prop. The next thing I wanna to touch on is our network. So give me just a minute to get down. All right, now that we're in front of the networking gear, don't freak out. This is a much more advanced network than something you would need to run a show like this. But what you'd wanna do is typically connect your controllers whether they're f16s or anything else to a switch or to your router and put them on their own show network that will allow your regular network to function normally so you can stream and everything like that and it won't impact your show the last thing i want to go over is the software side of things so give me just a moment to get in front of the computer all right the software is what allows you to program the lights to the music. It allows you to select the different colors, effects, and everything like that. Typically, you'll start by taking a picture of your house, and you can do that either before or after you have all the props set up. If you want to do it beforehand or create a layout before you actually have the props to kind of play around and see how it'll look, you can do that too. But once you have the props installed and set up, you want to try to take the model and overlay it where the actual prop will be. This will allow you to line up the song and the music exactly the way you want. Typically I start with kind of a bright background color. That way I can see the actual props, get them lined up. And then once everything is lined up, I'll drop that down. And once I am to kind of a brightness like this, this will be a better representation for when I play back the lights or the songs. Um, you can see over kind of in this area we have a lot of different groups and models. This just allows us extra flexibility and control. So like this one lights up almost everything. This group will light up the arches and so on. And then once you actually get over into the sequencing this is where 
you'll have an actual song and you see all these little marks these little ticks and everything these are all timing tracks and different effects they are different you can see they're in different colors which represent different colors for the lights at different moments throughout the song this is definitely the most time consuming part it takes hours and hours to program each one of these you can buy some of them pre-made um, when you do that typically you still have to go in and adjust because when you buy them from somebody they'll have different props than you their house will look different and if you don't spend the time to go back and kind of tweak those then it's not going to look right on your house um, i'll go into a more in-depth tutorial on the software and things like that in a future video but just wanted to kind of show you a brief overview so you can see how the house is turning blue over here and blue is set if i wanted to change that over to red all you'd have to do is basically just click that one button and you can do that with all the different props throughout you know the entire song and then you can get a representation of exactly what this particular effect is doing at this moment and as you click on the different effects you can see you get different patterns and things look a little different on the house So the software is super powerful, it's free. The software is called X-Lights, and after you have a show designed or developed, then you can use something like FPP or X-Schedule, and this allows you to set a schedule, and then you can put in the different songs that you have, and the show will run automatically. You won't have to do anything, it'll just recognize what time the show is supposed to start, and it'll kick off and end at whatever time you want. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it, hit that bell icon and subscribe to our channel. Let us know in the comment section what tutorials you'd like to see us cover. Thanks and we'll see you soon.